This morning on The Dish, Chef Mike Randolph, born in Cincinnati, his start in the industry was strictly entry level as a soda jerk at a Michigan resort. But he loved the restaurant world and after studying political science, went on to culinary school. He worked at top spots in Chicago, but he hit his stride in St. Louis with half and half, specializing in breakfast and brunch. Randolphi's for Southern Italian and the Latin inspired Publico, which this year earned Randolph James Beard semifinalist honors as best chef in the Midwest. Mike Randolph, good morning. Welcome to The Dish. Well, yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Tell so us what we've got here. Sure. So we have uh, kind of a meal inspired by stuff that we would do at the restaurants. Uh, starting on my right, we have some, some roasted Brussels sprouts, really simply served with a little bit of lemon and shaved Pecorino Romano. Uh, there's some mushrooms, shiitake and hen of the woods, a little balsamic vinegar. Kind of the centerpiece here is a, a pork copa. Uh, the copa is a muscle in the shoulder. can be difficult to find. Apparently, they had to call around to uh, Giuseppe's, an Italian butcher, and he knew exactly what it was. And then for dessert, some torn biscuits, some berries, and then a little sweetened mascarpone, and it's all kind of cooked as a papayot. Open it up, garnish it, and uh, you're good to Stuff go. Stuff it in your face. And this morning's beverage has a rather interesting name. Yes. Uh, so, so it's kind of an, o an ode to Prince. You'll have to bear with us a little bit on that. It's it's uh, smoke on Lake Minnetonka, and uh, at the, at the restaurant, we don't, we're not as adept at garnishing the cocktails at the restaurant it's garnished with what he likes to call a raspberry beret uh -huh. you have three restaurants all of which have very different focuses when you go from one to one, does your head spin? How do you keep them in order? Uh, two of them, Publico and, and Randolphies, are just separated by about 60 feet. Uh, uh -huh. So, you know, through, throughout the course of the week, I spend a good deal of my, my evenings there and walking back and forth. You know, one's very lively, kind of a place to be seen. Uh, the other one is, is very kind of comforting, kind of old school Italian supper club. Uh, so it's a really cool kind of dichotomy to walk 60 feet and walk from one world into another. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. do you, is it hard to develop the menu for each or is it really liberating to develop the menu for each? It's liberating. My wife calls it menu land. It's just kind of where, where I go <laughs> off to in my land. happy space. He's in menu land. Yeah, exactly. So did you come from a sort of a food family? I mean, I understand your aunt punished you severely yeah. when you came home with fast so food. So I but. came from uh, a, a, my father's side of the family. The, the Randolphy side uh, was a large Italian side. And right. yeah, I definitely have a memory of walking to my aunt's pool party and my great aunt Nettie and some of my grandfather their sisters throwing me in the pool because I showed up with a bag of fast food. Um, they threw you yeah, into the pool? Yeah, they threw me in the pool. Those are some aunts, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, to answer your question, no, I mean, I, I really grew up eating well-done fillets and twice-baked potatoes for the first 14 years of my life. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, like yeah. yeah me too. So, you know, once once I got out there, you know, people have these great stories about growing up, peeling potatoes in the restaurants. Like, that, that wasn't the case for me, so. You went to the New England Culinary School, but you're headquartered in the Midwest, where the dining scene has exploded yeah. recently. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more. You're in St. Louis. Why not Chicago, for example, which sure. is a bigger metropolitan? Yeah, area. I mean, I definitely kind of cut my teeth in Chicago, and it's it's an amazing place to cook. And we still, my wife and I, I'll take the kids up there and and, and visit. And I, I love Chicago. Um, when we were looking at kind of trying to try to strike out some identity on our own, it just seemed a lot simpler to go to some place like St. Louis, where there's a handful of really good restaurants. And where your wife is from. Where my wife is from, and that's how you get to St. Louis. You're either you're either born there or you're married into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm married into it. So. Oh well, sounds like the marriage. And just flourishing. Yeah. Oh, it's, you know. it's great. St. Louis has been very kind to me. Chef, I'll ask you to sign this dish, as we always do on this segment, and I'll also ask you the question we ask, which is, if you could share this meal with any person, past or present, who would it be? Sure. Uh, well, this is probably a generic answer. My father passed away two years ago, so I, I would say my dad, um, but if he was busy doing something like maybe <laughs> watching, this watching a Xavier basketball game with my <laughs> brothers, uh, then I would say Bruce Springsteen would be a uh, yeah. You know, uh, a, a, both a, good a, choices. A very good choices. Film. That is not a generic answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, not not at all. Uh, Chef Mike Randolph, congrats on all the success, all the projects, Thank and you thanks so for much. joining Good us. Good luck with the new restaurant. And for more on Chef Randolph and the dish, head to our website at cbsthismorning.com. Now here's a look at the weather for your weekend. It's all right.